Welcome back to Down in the Frame. Today we're gonna go over just exactly how I installed a low voltage Ecobee thermostat to control our new electric baseboard resistive heaters. Jackie's nice and warm in the big blanket. Another eight foot section back here. So I did a six foot over there and an eight foot over here. Oh, and everybody welcome to the Down in the Frame channel, our new dog Freya. Hi Freya. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty straightforward system, although it is different. When you do baseboard electric or any sort of resistive electric heaters, typically the thermostat is in line, meaning that the wire that comes from the panel goes directly into the box that has the high voltage, it's 120 volt to 240 volt thermostat, and then the load comes out of there to your heater. This I did differently. I wanted to control it with an Ecobee. So what I did was I brought it to a low voltage transformer slash relay and put that in a box downstairs and it all runs great. And the reason for all of this heating is because if you remember in all my old videos right here, there used to be a 56,000 BTU propane furnace that really was just a single point of heating, blasted this whole place uncontrollably with too much heat. The thermostat was over on that wall over here and it was really just not very comfortable. It was loud. It was very air leaky. If you watch my wall restoration project, you're going to see exactly how air leaky it was. Um, those videos will come in the future. So I ripped that out and we needed heat for the winter. Although this is technically a backup heat source because eventually there will be a mini split head right there. Future video. And if the wife approves of it. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get down the frame. All right, so the first step is building the junction box. Uh, I'm just grabbing some supplies here, but I ended up going with a three quarter piece of plywood that I screw the junction box down to. And this junction box is gonna have the cable coming from my panel in it, the two cables going out to my baseboard heaters, uh, as well as the transformer relay. So I'm just knocking out the KOs right now for the transformer relay. And getting that in place, tightening down the lock nut. Uh, nothing special there, uh, but I want everything to be solid, secure, so I can just go downstairs, screw it directly into the floor joist, and then basically just connect the wires to it. I had ADHD throughout this whole project, so my next step is I want to see how cool the Ecobee looked on the wall. So I'm going through and laying that out and drilling the holes. Gotta this work. is also probably the hardest part because I kind of don't know how to get into the wall cavity right now. I want to try to drill directly up into the center of it. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just opening up a hole and we're going to try to stick a snake down it once I get this plate on. And see if I can see it from under the stairs. So I measured from this edge to the back of the stairs, which were over there. It's about 27 inches. It led me to this stud bay. And what I noticed here was there's some framing nails. So these ones are slightly offset. And so I drilled right in the center. If you can see, that's pink insulation. I got right in the wall cavity. Just gotta get the snake down there. So yeah, it worked out even though I couldn't see it from underneath the stairs, I was able to just strike gold and hit right into the center of the wall. Uh, and then I was like, all right, I can't get the snake all the way up. So I did a sneaky little hole behind my trim. Uh, that way I didn't have to patch the drywall because we just painted the kitchen and I don't want to do that. So it's literally right in the middle of the stud. Yeah, I nailed it right like in the middle of the stud bay. It's exactly where I wanted it. Was it by chance? Or? No, I like measured and I like, it was intentional. So the way that I snaked this, I ended up snaking it down from the thermostat, hooking this wire on and pulling it up through this thermostat hole. And then I just shoved the extra down in the basement. I know I could have shoved the entire snake all the way into the basement and then pulled the low voltage wire up through all the way to the thermostat, but it's fine. I, it wasn't a long run and it was easy to do. Make sure uh, you spray foam that hole when you're done with it. Yeah, putting it back together as if I wasn't even there. For those who are married, you know, clean up after your messes. 
Happy wife, happy life. Alright, so now I'm stripping the wire here. It's easy, I just score with my Milwaukee 7-in-1s. Just cut off all the extra stuff there. Back wrap, the extra wires. We're just using red, white, and blue America. Ever being pro. I'm going to land that on the red on the RC. The blue is going to be our common. And the white is going on W1. And that's going to be the same exact color scheme uh, as the thermostat. All right, so now I just jumped into doing the baseboard. This is pretty straightforward. I took out all the nails on this just so that I could preserve that trim and make it look like I wasn't even there. I'm just kind of lining up where I want to put the baseboard. I couldn't tell if I wanted it pushed up against the door or the middle of the wall. I ended up going the middle of the wall. And uh, you just want to play. Chloe wanted to play. So. Just marking out the hole, and then I'm going to move that out of the way, drill a pilot hole to make sure that there's no joist there. Uh, it goes right through, don't hit anything, and I'm going to come back with my uh, half-inch spade bit and get right through it. Keeping everything clean. The connector, I'm actually putting this connector in kind of backwards. Some people think you put it underneath, but I wanted to have access to the screws, so I did it that way. Uh, and then I just pushed the snake down. So that snake there, I actually kind of reached back there and grabbed it. That stone wall is about a five foot difference between where the hole is uh, and that stone wall. So I'm making up my, my head on my snake here, making sure that there's no wires able to catch because this is going to have to travel pretty far on its own and through plastic and insulation. So I just pull it up to a certain point and then I come back down and I feed it up to myself so that it doesn't chafe on any of the, the block walls. Oh, sweet girl. Push my wire through and make sure it's pretty tight and then clamp it down in the connector. That's duct seal on the left there. That duct seal, I'm using it because I can't have access down there because of its five foot difference. So I'm just gonna use this to air seal. Put a big ball of it under there and push it down and then push the whole assembly down on top of it. Uh, this was really easy, this baseboard, because that's three quarter planks right there. Plenty of meat to screw into. Cut up the trim there and make sure it's nice and tight and hit it with some trim nails. My whole philosophy is that I tried to get the baseboards and all the mess done upstairs while my wife was away so that she didn't really feel the disruption and the mess in the house. So red and black and black on black because I ran uh, three wire and I'm just leaving the neutrals in there and I'll show that more in the next baseboard. When placing your baseboard electric heat, just make sure that there are no outlets above the baseboard and make sure that there's 12 inches of free space in front of it. That way there's no fire hazards. So this is the eight foot Cadet, I actually had to get this special ordered. It wasn't in stock at the uh, big box store. Uh, it was important to me, and I made sure to run the numbers, the amperage numbers, to make sure that my wire could handle this, make sure that the baseboard electric heaters could handle it, make sure that the transformer relay could handle it, and my breaker could handle it. There it is, right in a stud bay that has no insulation in it. Very cool. I think what I'm going to end up doing is running the wire through this floor joist bay all the way down that way, which is following my lighting. And then I think I'm going to mount it. I think I'm going to mount our box right here. That way it's kind of equidistant from everything and uh, we can make it look nice. All right, so in that case, I'm going to cut that wire, untangle it a little bit, and then 
get one up there. Get all the wires down here and everything buttoned up upstairs. That way the wife doesn't get buried in a mess. Then I'll come down here and button everything up. So while I'm doing that, the way I calculated this, the eight foot section that I'm installing right now pulls about 8.33 amps. And at 125%, that puts us at 10.41 amps. And then the six foot one pulls 6.3 amps times 125%, that's seven amps or 7.8 amps. So I rounded those numbers up. So I did 11 amps and I did eight amps. That puts us below 20 amps at 125%. So that means all of our wire, our transformer relay, all that stuff's good. And the reason for, for the 125% is that this is a continuous load. This could potentially run for three hours is what the code is assuming. This wall was a little bit more difficult. I really didn't have a whole lot of studs in this wall that I found. So I had to use drywall anchors. No problem though. I put the baseboard up, marked out the holes, drilled them out, put the drywall anchors in hammered them in with my trusty Milwaukee hammer there, and then uh, sank the screws in there. Same process as the other one, strip my wire, expose the the neutral, the two hots, and the ground. I'm gonna land the ground first. Land that ground, make sure it's connected. That ground's gonna go all the way back to the panel to catch any faults that could potentially happen. Tuck that neutral back there. We're not gonna use it. It's just there as a spare or for any other future things I want to do. You could use 12-2 wire and then recolor the neutral as a another black conductor or red that'd save you a little bit of money too so this is stranded on solid so i'm kind of wrapping the stranded around the solid then i'm putting the wire nut on there make sure they're tight tucking them in All right, so now that I have the baseboards installed and I have the wiring where they need to go, we need to go downstairs and mount this. I've left a lot of extra wood around the edges just so that I can have a secure point within, you know, 12 inches of the box, which is code. So we're gonna go mount this, get our wires into it, and then we're gonna wire this up. And this is a Albi. This is actually a normally open relay slash 12 volt transformer. I'm going to have my control wires come into here, which will just mirror up in the Ecobee. As you can see, this is the di wiring diagram for a transformer, and it shows you how to wire it L1, L2, leg 1, leg 2, because it's a 240 volt system. And I've tried to prep as much as I can on the board before I go and mount it, because I don't want to be upside down for that long. But yeah, so I'm also going to try to use Wago connectors. They are rated for 20 amps, no problem. So, but yeah, just make sure that they're, they're rated for their use. I'm gonna try out the Wagos, mostly because I'm dealing with a stranded conductor and a bunch of solid conductors. So I think it's gonna be easier for me to use the Wagos and be a little bit cleaner. So I'm getting this position, but I actually used cabinet screws on this and I did four cabinet screws. I would use more and I wouldn't use cabinet screws because it actually squeaks when I walk over that now. So I went down later and added in more screws. I'm just putting in my non-metallic connectors in there and then the two loads I'm bringing in and tightening those up.
So I'm just unspooling the wire now for the heater. We locked out. It looks like, let's see if you can see it. We go right down to the basement right there. So many spider webs. All right, wires in the box. Let's get this tacked up here and secured. That is secured. Time to secure it all the way back. And I'm just gonna do a staple per joist. So that's my line. And I was gonna run it through the joist, but I just decided against it. I, don't, I didn't think I needed to do it here. It's pretty tucked away and hidden. So running it on the bottom, all the way back to that hole that we had drilled and to get it up into the panel. Now be careful about running wires like this in a standard basement. You might need some runner boards because people could hang things on it, clothes or whatever. For the grounding system, I am gonna use standard wire nuts, but the rest of it, I'm going to probably use Wagos. Now, I am using a metal box, so I have a jumper that I've already screwed in here that goes to the box with the proper grounding screw, and then it ties together with all the other ones. So the box is grounded all the way to the baseboard electric heat themselves. Now we wanna get a nice flat edge on there for the wire nut, so I cut it at the lowest point, that's gonna give us a nice flat edge so that when we put the wire nut on it, it has those two points out of either side of that flat edge. It's gonna hook into the threads in the wire nut and tighten right up. Our box is grounded. We can go ahead and tuck that up in there, get that out of our way. The next thing we can do is eliminate our neutrals because we're not really using them. In fact, you guys can run 12-2 you don't need a neutral when it comes to the system, but because I like to do funky things with my wiring, I decided to run the neutral anyway. Push them up into a corner that I like, right here, this side, cut them all flush. Um, we're not gonna land the neutral in the panel. We're just gonna land it here. Um, and we didn't land the neutrals anywhere else. So this is really just, just so that if I ever wanted to use a neutral, all I have to do is land in the panel. Helps keep this box a little bit clean. Don't over twist them. I just do like a little twist like that. Not all the way up. Wire nut them. Set them and forget them. Now all that we have left here is our hots. And we will have to take a minute to think about that. Hot we have coming over here is our line. These are our loads. I have to look at the wiring diagram. We can't just tie them all together. The load needs to be interrupted by the relay. It needs to be on the other side of the open relay. So you have your line over here. There needs to be that relay in the middle. If we tie them all together, they're gonna have power constantly. And we don't want that. The box I went with for this is a four and 11s. <clears throat> it's a little bit bigger than a four by four. Four by 11 sixteenths, I should say. So I did that just because I want as much space as I can in this box. Okay, that took me a second to figure out, but all of our reds, including our feed or our line, are gonna be tied together. And our blue is gonna be tied together. I drew up this little piece of paper. So yeah, all our blue and our reds go together. And our reds I'm calling L2, so L2, 120 volts here on leg two. Our red's gonna go from the blacks to the baseboard. Leg ones coming from the baseboard are gonna be attached to the red. Our line, black is going to go straight into the relay black and then these are going to go together so our line black to the relay black our relay red to our load blacks and then our blue goes to our leg twos let's hope that works i'm going to try not to cut the relay wires might have a little bit more slack than needed in the box but the relay is not something i can pull more wire for relay wasn't that expensive though but still All right, now it's time to wire our relay. And I already decided what colors were gonna be what upstairs. And this is 18.5. So the conductors that I used were the red, the blue, and the white. So our yellow and our green are unused. And I'm just gonna back wrap that. Our blue is our common. Our red 
is the R, or the red on the relay, and our white is our W on the relay. Let's start with my comm in here. You don't want any copper showing outside the terminal, but you don't want any insulators blocking the terminal from the wire. All right, so I have my heater wire coming down into the panel here. I did land the neutral just to keep things clean. Have my two hot wires going to the 20 amp breaker. All right, so we are in the middle of the panel upgrade, but I had the heating circuit already landed and I brought the Ecobee into the HVAC test sequence. And um, you you guys can't smell it, but we did, <laughs> we, we tested it and it works. That's the gist of it. <laughs> it works and you can hear the relay. I'll go in the basement in a minute. And I'll have Jacques just keep flipping it back and forth, but you can hear the relay turn on and those boards pull a lot of energy and make this place pretty warm. So I'm gonna actually tap it on. We're gonna turn our ammeter to 400 amps. We're just gonna clip it on one leg. That's 16 and a half amps. 16 amps, so it's pretty balanced. Uh, and that's the only load on this panel right now. So that's 16 amps there, 16 amps there. Yeah, it's chooching, it puts out heat. I'm gonna have Jacques trigger that and I'll go downstairs and show you guys. Twenty three degrees out. The set point is seventy and it's not calling for heat. It's warm in here. It does not feel like it's twenty three degrees out. And these things I have it set to kind of ramp up in the morning to reach seventy and it's holding. These things can heat <laughs> and it can heat pretty well. I'm pretty happy about that. All right, guys, thank you for watching. That was a fun project. Thank you for Jacques helping me out, getting all the wiring done. Honestly, we love them. The placement was perfect. The thermostat, being able to control that, to set a schedule, to be able to control it remotely. It's really nice. We have it set to kind of ramp up in the mornings when we walk downstairs. It is awesome. They're super quiet. It just, you don't even know that they're running. You just kind of walk into a wall of warm air, and I love that. I recommend these products, and I'll link everything down below. As you guys I saw part of this was the 200 amp sub panel upgrade. I alluded to this project in my 200 amp service upgrade, but it's been a year and I haven't done it. So I'm gonna post it in the next video you guys see. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time on Down the Frame.